What did you expect? I'm completely cold. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name's Mark. This is 2000 Hours of Banjo, a channel dedicated to documenting my progress in the first 2000 hours of trying to learn a practice, of trying to learn how to play this instrument, the banjo, as an adult beginner with no background in music whatsoever, to do three main things. One, and most importantly, entertain my mom. Hey mom. <laughs> Number two, to show you the true unvarnished, genuine, realistic portrayal of what progress actually looks like. And three, if I can actually learn how to play this instrument, if I can do it, so can you. Now you're probably thinking, Mark, um, you now have, oh, we're at 625 hours of practice and your rendition of Wayfaring Stranger at the beginning of this video was horrific. It was. It absolutely was. And I am putting this on the internet for you to see that um, when cold, I suck. Um, I'm a beginner, so I kind of suck by nature. But certainly when I'm cold and I haven't warmed up, warmed up I'm really, really bad. Now, the reason that I wanted to, to do this uh, and, and demonstrate this for you is because I got a comment from uh, somebody by the name of Wayne. Wayne, if you're watching, hey, thanks for tuning in. And thank you for your comment. Wayne said in his comment that he gets frustrated during warm up because he's not playing at a skill level equal to what his skill level ended with during his last practice. Now, I had this problem too, and I actually responded to Wayne in the comment section, but I thought that his comment was so important that I wanted to make a video about it, or at least partially make, make part of a video about it. By the way, <laughs> just a pause really quick. Uh, we did break 500 subscribers. I did promise that I was going to get the channel a gift. Um, I'm going to reveal that gift at the end of the video because uh, I think this is more important what we're talking about now. So if you want to see the channel gift, tune in at the, to the end, stay to the end so you can see what it is, or just, you know, tune in next time and you're going to see it anyway. Um, for those savvy, attentive viewers, um, you probably saw something in the background last week that was covered, that was the gift, hint, hint, uh, that at least gives you the size and shape of, of what the gift is. But moving on, anyway, I thought Wayne's comment was so good and so important uh, that I wanted to touch upon it in a video. And the reason that I really do is because he, there's a key word in the comment he made, frustration. Frustration is the key thing that causes people to quit. And I don't want people to quit playing their instrument. I don't want to quit playing mine. And I don't want to do it because I got frustrated. Especially if the frustration is due to a mis a, a wrong expectation of what progress looks like. And we're gonna talk about progress and what progress looks like quite a bit, right? Starting right now. So I'm gonna put my banjo down. There's not gonna be much playing today. There's gonna be a lot of me yapping away, unfortunately. So if that's not your thing, um, that, that's fine, I understand. But uh, I do think this is important. I have this chart that I, that I put here and I'm gonna fill it out. Get some pens here. I think the problem that Wayne had and that I had too, and maybe some of you have, uh, when it comes to warming up and getting that frustrated feeling because what happened? Like, where'd all my skill go? I think that comes from a bad expectation of how progress works. So if we imagine we practice and we have a practice session, right? In that practice session, we start at one skill level, we gain some skill during the practice, and then practice is over. Tomorrow we practice again, and the wrong expectation is that we're gonna pick up right where we left off with the skill. Practice, stop practice, and on and on. And this is how we build skill from practice. That is wrong. That is not correct. 
we go cold between practices and that manifests as effectively a loss in skill. So truly what practice looks like, I'm going to use a red pen for this, is we start practice, we gain some skill during practice, we stop practicing, we start losing some skill as we go cold. And how much skill we lose depends on the length between practices. Start practice again, build some skill, stop, lose a little bit of skill, practice again, and so forth. Progress is definitely a three steps forward, one step back process. Okay? And that's what's happening. That is. Wayne, that is what you're suffering from. That's what I'm suffering from. And I, I, I would think that everybody suffers from this, is that we need that warm up because we've lost our skill and we're, our brain is getting the juices flowing to bring those skills up back to the surface so that we can start launching from there. But we always start lower. So if you're sitting there and you're comparing your, how you're performing during warm up versus how you were at the end of the last practice. If you're thinking along the green line, you're frustrated. Why, why am I having such a problem with what I was doing so well at the end of yesterday's practice? I should be, I should be here, but you're not. Realistically, you're here. The good thing about the red line is that you should expect to be a little bit worse when you start practice. That's the whole idea behind warm up. That's why we have to have warm up. And that's fine. If you have that expectation in your head and you're like, wow, I'm sucking right now. No, it's I'm sucking at the beginning of every practice. That's just the process and that's how things work. And that's fine. And then we move forward and we don't let that frustration affect our motivation, our love for playing or anything like that. It's just part of the process. Now there's ways to get around it outside of just having the correct expectation of how progress actually works. There's a couple of things we can do to, to remove that frustration, two that come to mind as far as warm up. One, I, for example, I started with Wayfaring Stranger. I would never start with Wayfaring Stranger during warm up. It is too difficult of a song for my skill set right now, okay? That is definitely a solid intermediate song. I'm not an intermediate player just yet. That is biting off way more than I can chew. I will pick a easier song uh, like Cripple Creek or Boil Them Cabbage Down. But even then, even when I pick something like Boil Them Cabbage Down, I'm going to play it a lot slower. I'm going to play it a lot slower, as slow as I need to in order to play it accurate or as accurate as possible. It's warm up, so there are going to be some mistakes, but I want as much of my practice as accurate as possible to wear those correct grooves in my brain, to build that groove for that song nice and deep so that I don't know how to play it wrong. If I start practicing too fast or practicing a song that's too complex, I'm going to make more mistakes and that's going to bump the needle out of the groove. It's going to create spurs that are going to take me off the, out of the groove that I want to make. And I don't want to do, I want to limit that as much as possible. I want to repeat as much accurate playing as possible and reduce as much inaccurate playing as possible, even during warm up. And I do that by playing a different song or an easy song and playing it nice and slow. Um, the other reason that I do that is to set myself up for success, right? We get frustrated because we're making mistakes. If we slow down the song so that we're not making mistakes, it's harder to be frustrated by that. Yes, we have to have a bit of humility and say that I'm playing 20, 30 beats per minute slower than I did yesterday, but I'm not making mistakes and it's hard to be frustrated when I'm not making mistakes, especially if I just hang on for five minutes and I'll probably start picking up the pace on that song in just five minutes. I'm even, even as much as, okay, now I'm playing as good as I was yesterday on this song in just five to 10 minutes. So I'm good now. So the idea here is to set yourself up for success and to wear that groove 
in your brain as, as much as possible in order to make it hard to skip out, hard to play the song incorrectly, okay? All right, so moving on. Anyway, so true path of progress, red, green, it's a lie. Don't believe the green line. All right, so moving on. I'm at 625 hours. I'm officially a beginner, so, and I'm really, pr really proud of that. So, Mark, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, for those that don't know, um, I made a video a while ago some, that was titled something along, I'll put a link in it, to it below, something along the lines of how this chart kept me from quitting in the first year. I keep that chart in my tab binder as a bit of inspiration. Um, it's, it's right here. I'll put it on the screen for you too. It's from an article by a, uh, a web magazine called Hub Guitar. And it basically lays out how much hours of practice you need to get to, to reach a certain skill level. And if we look at this chart, I'm at 625 hours exactly today. I am now a beginner. I'm now a beginner musician. I am a professional beginner banjo player, <laughs> if you will. And I'm really, really proud of that. Now granted, the chart also says I'm going to be a beginner for another 625 hours, so there's that. But I'm not basic, I'm not introductory, I'm a full-fledged be beginner musician. And actually, you know what? <laughs> While we're talking about it, I just thought of something else that really, really irritates me. So bear with me, I know this is a bit of a tangent. I'm gonna draw another, another graph here. And I'm sure this is really interesting, but there's something else that, that tends to bother me when we think about skill, progress, and our expectations. All right, so very similar chart, but instead of practice days, I'm just putting time, time of practice, and then skill also on the, the vertical axis there. This is what we think of when we think of practicing more and more throughout time and our skill level, right? I'm gonna try to get a thicker line there. And that the more time we practice, the more our skill goes up. And it's, and it's uh, dependent, it's directly really, uh, proportional. And we, as long as we keep practicing, we're improving. This green line, again, is a lie. This is not how pro progress works. If, you've, if you're a musician or a beginner musician, you're practicing, um, certainly I've experienced this, you've probably experienced this too. The true line of progress is, is more like this. And I know it looks weird, but what I'm trying to uh, portray here is that it's not a straight line. It's not consistent. We're not gonna be consistently getting better the more we practice. That's not how it works. Certainly it's not how it works for me. There's gonna be, there's gonna be plateaus, there's gonna be valleys, there's gonna be points where it was like, oh my gosh, you just realized something important, your skill just blows up in a matter of days. Then you hit another plateau, and then you're back in another valley. There's these, it, it's a roller coaster. Progress is a roller coaster. It's not consistent. And the reason that the green line is so dangerous as far as expectations are concerned is that one of these days, if you haven't experienced it yet, you're going to be on a plateau or you're going to be in a valley and it's not going to feel good. And you're going to wonder, what's wrong with me? What happened? Did I reach the peak of my skill level and now I'm just working against myself and just getting worse? I'm, why, why even practice anymore? I quit. I, I got as good as I'm gonna get. The green line tells me the more I practice, the more my skill goes up. I've, I've been on a plateau for weeks. I guess this is as good as I'm, I'm ever gonna get. Don't fall into that trap. The green line is a lie. The red line is the truth. Plateaus happen. You can work through them. You can get better. Just keep practicing. Even valleys, even if you have an injury. I, I've proven this to myself. I took three and a half months off due to a finger injury. I've been sick at times. I try to practice, but I know my heart's not in it and I'm not doing that good of a job. 
maybe I go on a vacation and I can't bring my instrument. Maybe I'm, I've been sick or maybe something, maybe my banjo gets damaged and I have to take it into a shop and they've got it for a couple of weeks. Stuff like that is going to happen. That's your valley. What you give up? No, you, you, you pick up the banjo back again and you practice, you climb the other side of the valley and you keep progressing. You'll notice that both lines end up in the same place. I'm just saying that the green line, if the green line is your expectation, you have a higher risk of quitting because you're going to get frustrated because you hit a plateau and the green line doesn't reflect any plateau. Don't trust the green line, trust the red line. All right, lots of preaching. Uh, I think, I think I'm, a, I'm done with the preaching. I just want to make sure, I, I want us to succeed, okay? I want to succeed myself. I want you guys to succeed. And I think knowing that frustration is the number one reason why people put their instruments down, if we can just avoid that, if we can work around it and not get as frustrated, we have a much higher chance of successfully becoming the players that we want to play or want to be. I actually have another video where I cover a lot of tips and tricks that I use on myself to reduce the amount of frustration that I feel and experience while practicing while on this journey. I'll put a link to that below. It covers some of this, but it covers a lot of other things too. We're never gonna get rid of all the frustration in practice, that's fine. We shouldn't expect that. A little bit of frustration is fine. If you're not frustrated, you're not learning is, is something my, uh, an old coach of mine used to always say. So we're not gonna get rid of it all. What we just wanna do is we just don't wanna be so frustrated that we rage quit and we never pick up our instrument. Cause that is, that is the cliff. <laughs> you follow the green line and you hit a plateau. You wonder what happens and that's it. You quit. And we don't want this. This is not what we want. All right, enough preaching. The channel gift. We did hit 500 subscribers. I feel like an official YouTuber. Almost, but not quite, actually. First, before I get into what I got the channel, I want to say thank you to Daniel. Uh, Daniel, if you're watching, thank you very much, man. Uh, Daniel, in one of his comments, said that he saw that I was at 499 subscribers, and he couldn't just let that lie, so he became the 500th subscriber. And for some reason, we had like a little bit of a boom. We, we, we grew quite a bit over the past week or so. And I think we're at five, I think we're almost at 560. So we're well on our way. I think honestly, the true milestone for a lot of beginner YouTubers is that thousand subscriber mark. We got a bit to go there. I'm not necessarily concerned about subscribership anyway, but uh, to be legit, um, we, we have a bit to hit 1000, but I feel legit too legit to quit. I can't believe I just said that because of the channel gift. And this is what I got. Ugh. Isn't this sweet? <laughs> it's a sign. It's an official sign with my logo on it. And not only that, check this out. It lights up. <laughs> and you can change colors. I can do whatever I want. I'm using a little remote here to change colors. It's really cool. I love it. Um, I not, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it just yet. Uh, somebody wrote a, th a comment that just said Thor. So we have a Thor fan out there. I'm a Thor fan too. So I don't think I'm going to put it here. I'm not going to take down Thor. Uh, even if I did, my wife would kill me because there's another um, comic book hero poster here off the side of Iron Man and Captain America. And uh, I'm not going to... I'm not gonna take this down. It, it would mess up the uh, symmetry of this wall, which would drive my wife nuts. So I'll probably set it back there somewhere um, where it was resting previously and, and just have it be a little bit more subtle. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I have some warming up to do, some bad warming up to do, and then some practicing to do. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.